I'm here today once again at Desert Memorial Park in Cathedral City, which is part of the Palm Springs Desert area. I come here often to walk, and I'm here today to take my walk. And while I'm here today, I thought I would tell you the story about one of the famous graves here. It's one I don't think I've ever mentioned on this channel before. I've visited, I think, all of the famous graves here at one time or another over the years. And I mentioned, I think I've mentioned a couple of times in a couple of my videos that this is where I have my future final resting place. My cremation niche here is up here on the wall. And just a few feet away from my cremation niche is the final resting place, the grave site of actor William Powell and his son, William David Powell, who sadly took his own life back in 1968. I have shared William Powell's gravesite on this channel, gosh, years ago. And I may have mentioned his son. And I think at the time I looked up, I looked him up online because I realized, like, I could tell by the dates on his headstone that he wasn't very old when he died. So I wondered what had happened to him and discovered that he had taken his own life. But I never shared his story, so I thought I would do that with you today. He was born on February 27th, 1925, here in California, and died on March 13th. 1968 in Los Angeles. Apparently he had some health issues. He had hepatitis and kidney problems and he suffered from depression and I guess he just couldn't take it anymore and decided to end his life. But it's the way he ended his life that to me was just so shocking. It's something I've never heard of anyone doing before. He actually stabbed himself to death. To stab yourself to death. I can't even imagine how you would do that. Apparently he stabbed himself multiple times in the chest. My first thought was, could he have really done that, or did someone else do it? But apparently he left a four-page suicide note for his dad. I guess he was very close with his dad, and he just couldn't take it anymore. So how sad is that? What a way to end your life. That seems like something you would do if you were really angry. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe some of you will know. I mean, have you heard of anyone else taking their life in that way, in that really dramatic? I mean, that's like a statement. but. It doesn't seem like he was trying to get back at anyone, like his dad or anything. It seemed like he was very close to his dad. So, I don't know. It seemed very confusing. But then again, I guess if you're in that state of mind where you're so depressed and you're contemplating doing something like that, I, I don't think you're thinking rationally anyway. So, maybe it was just a quick, well, I was going to say, maybe it was just a quick, irrational decision. But he wrote a four-page letter that he left for his dad. So... That doesn't seem real fast and irrational. Now, for those of you younger viewers, you may not realize just how popular his dad was, William Powell. He was nominated for three Academy Awards during his career, once for The Thin Man, once for My Man Godfrey, and once for Life with Father, three of his more popular movies. I didn't count them, but he must have been in 100 movies or close to it. He was very, very popular, and I think most people probably remember him for his role as Nick Charles, in the film series, The Thin Man. There were a total of six films that he appeared in back in the day. This was back in the 1930s and 40s, and these are still classics today. Now, William Powell lived to be 91 years old, dying from pneumonia on March 5th, 1984, here in Palm Springs. And his son, William David Powell, well, I don't think he was living here when he died. His Finding Grave Memorial page says he was living in Los Angeles at the time of his death. But he did get married here. It was a brief marriage from 1956 to 1957. I don't think it was even a year. I think it was like a nine-month marriage to child actress Patricia Parsons. He was married here at his dad's home here in Palm Springs. And I visited that home on this channel here in the past. So they were married here in Palm Springs, but he died up in L.A. and and they were so they were divorced in 1957. So he was so he wasn't married when he died. He was never as famous as his dad, but he was a television writer and producer on shows like Bonanza, Death Valley Days, Rawhide, 77 Sunset Strip, and other shows, very popular shows during that period, during that era. But unfortunately, he suffered from depression and ended it all in 1968. And since he's buried right here, just feet away from where I will be one day, I just wanted to share his story with all of you. 
and I wanted to learn more about his story myself. I don't know if any of you do this. If do, How many of you have future final resting places already picked out and purchased and you know where you're planning to be buried one day or interred or whatever? My younger brother died at the age of 55 about, gosh, I think it was around six, seven, eight years ago now. And when that happened, because he was so young and it was so instant, we went ahead and purchased our future final resting places here at that time. We made the decision to go ahead and, and purchase these niches to be cremated and have our ashes and inured here. My grandparents are right here, just a dozen or so grave sites away. So that's why I chose to be buried here. I've always loved Palm Springs, the Palm Springs desert area. And I thought this would be a really nice place to be buried, you know, close to my grandparents. And so that's why I chose this location. I'd be curious to know why you chose your location if you've already chosen one. So this is the spot where I will be one day. But in the meantime, I come here to the cemetery to walk. I mean, cemeteries are a great place to walk. There's usually not as much traffic and usually not as treacherous as walking on some of the busy streets. I do see a lot of people here walking around the cemetery for exercise, and that's nice. And when I'm here, I always try to visit some of my favorite grave sites. Frank Sinatra, of course, is here. Everyone seems to know this cemetery because of Frank Sinatra. And he's just about, I don't know, four or five, six rows away from... William Powell and William David Powell and Mousy Powell, William Powell's wife. So lots of famous people are buried in this this front section near the the um, the front gate near Ramon Road. But there are other famous people all over the cemetery here, and and I'm still finding new new people. And Suzanne Summers was recently buried here. She doesn't have her headstone yet, but every time I come here, I I just look around just to see in case it's been placed. I'm sure it'll be placed at some point, or, may, or maybe not. A lot of famous people don't have headstones, so maybe she won't have a headstone. But I still look whenever I come, so hopefully one of these days her headstone will appear and I'll be able to share it with you. In the meantime, I can get my walk in and get to know some of my future neighbors. I mean, it is a little weird, a little, I don't know, is it, is it morbid? I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the word for it is. I mean, it's certainly not not common. I, I don't think most people probably choose their future final resting place and then go visit it all the time while they're still alive. Although maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is more common than I think. But I, I like it. I, I just like the cemetery. It's really nice. It's like walking in a park. And the fact that one day I'll be buried here, well, that's just sort of a maybe an extra bonus, but even if I wasn't planning to be buried here, this would still be a nice place to come and walk and to visit. It's very historic with all the historic, famous grave sites here, so it's just a really nice, beautiful place to walk. Oh, and in case you're wondering why my eyes are so red, and well, especially this one has got white, crusty stuff all around it, I've been having an allergic reaction to the eye drops that I'm taking. My ophthalmologist has me taking three different eye drops now and throughout the day, day and night and throughout the middle of the day. And I think there, it's just building up around the eye and it gets real crusty, but it's not something you can just wipe away. It doesn't go away. It just like gets stuck in the skin or it's the skin that's turning white and, and getting crusty. So I don't know. My ophthalmologist is working with me. We're trying to figure out something to get rid of this allergic reaction, but so far nothing Nothing has been successful, and the side effect of the, the drops is also to make my eyes red, so, you know, that's kind of a mess. So anyway, in case you were wondering why my eyes are so red and crusty and weird, that's why. <laughs> Sorry. This week, I want to give a shout-out and a very big thank you to my newest channel supporters, Lisa Hogan, Aries Scorpio Girl, Dana Pretzer, and Cliff Sheffield. Thank you all so much for your extra generous donations to my channel using Patreon and YouTube Super Thanks. They're all very appreciated. And of course, thank you to all of you who have taken the time to subscribe to my channel and to leave comments and to give thumbs up and to share these videos with your friends. It's all very helpful to this channel and means a lot too. And until our next visit to the cemetery together, thanks for sharing the memories, everybody.